What we're gonna talk about today are chicken pot pies. And I actually have a story to tell you about it. So come over here, we'll start prepping the veg, and I'll share my story with you. I had been making this chicken pot pie pasta at home, and I thought it was so cool because it didn't take as long to cook, and I was feeding it to my kids. And then I came to work, and I was gonna do it as my column. And then I thought, well, it's pretty cool, but maybe people wanna know other things you can do with chicken pot pie filling. So and then I did chicken and dumplings, same mixture, just a little more liquid. And then I thought, well, what the heck? do chicken pot pies too. And then it turns out that my kids don't even like the chicken pot pie pasta. My daughter Michaela, who I was making this for, only likes real chicken pot pie. <laughs> How embarrassing is that? Just because Michaela doesn't like it doesn't mean it isn't good. However, today I'm making actual pot pie. You're gonna cook these in three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Just let that butter melt and then add all of the vegetables at once. Sometimes recipes will have you start softening the onion and then add the carrot and celery. I'm just throwing it all in there at once. I'm saving you time already. Using my noggin. <laughs> Let that start cooking. Season it with some salt and pepper. And while it's softening, which should only take about three minutes, you can cut up some green beans and dice some cooked chicken breast. All right, I have a third of a pound of green beans here. This is enough for four servings trim them, and then cut them into about one inch pieces. You could totally double this, and I recommend doing it. Throw some of them in the freezer, and then have chicken pot pies whenever you want, or chicken pot pie pasta, or chicken and dumplings. <laughs> I have two poached chicken breasts here, boneless, skinless, which is nice and low in fat, low in calories, people like that. I just cook these in simmering broth for five minutes, turn it off 12 minutes, which would be 160 in the thickest part. Just dice these guys up. The great thing about using chicken breast here, like I said, is that it's lighter comfort food on top of being comfort food. What do you think about that? All right, what else do I need to do? I just need some chicken broth. Homemade would be fantastic, but canned is also completely acceptable here. Oh, look at that. It's just slightly less than two cups, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water. Ta-da, magically two cups. And now I can add my flour, five tablespoons of flour. You wanna be careful at this point because generally speaking, when you're making a roux like this, it's equal parts butter and flour. And this is five tablespoons of flour and only three tablespoons of butter. So keep stirring it and then just cook it until the raw flour smell has cooked off. And then you know it's time to add your liquid. What I wanna do here is add my stock and stir at the same time. A little bit at a time is really helpful, especially in the beginning for no lumpability. This is the most important part, just keep stirring. Once it's smoothed out, then you can add the rest of the liquid just a little bit qu more quickly. Then you just wanna bring this to a boil. Make sure that you're stirring it at this point because it could very easily stick to the edges of your pan and burn. As you can see, it's come to a boil. It's already quite thick and delightful looking. I'm gonna add my green beans and chicken, as promised. Once you do this for the pot pie version, you're done. You can turn the heat off because the green beans will cook further in the oven and you don't wanna overcook either the green beans or the chicken, right? So you can ladle it immediately into these ramekins. These are eight ounce ramekins. As you can see, this is pretty thick. That's exactly what you're looking for in a delicious pot pie filling, right? You could add a little bit of garlic to your sauteing onions or stir some chopped parsley in right before you add it to the ramekins. I was really just trying to keep my ingredient list down, but you know, go crazy. Flavor it up however you want. Just trying to make it easy on you guys. Alrighty. I'm ready to top these. I have a sheet of puff pastry here defrosted. Just lightly dust your counter. You really only need to unfold your puff pastry. You don't really need to roll it out. Just press it so it's a nice, even shape. Don't worry if it breaks a little bit. You can just press it back together. This is a three and a quarter inch cutter. So match your ramekins with your cutter. You can also use the top of the ramekin and trace around the ramekin. Basically, you just need a round that's gonna fit inside your ramekin. Cut four rounds, then cut an X in the center of each round to allow the filling to vent while it's cooking so the puff pastry doesn't get soggy. Then you need an egg wash. So just one egg, whisk it, and then you can brush it over the top. It gives a nice golden brown and shiny appearance. It's totally optional. You really don't need to do it, but you know, it's nice and it makes them look more beautiful. I love frozen puff pastry. It's such a great convenience product, but if you wanted to make your own pastry, you could top these with pie crust, like a pepperizé or something like that. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could make puff pastry, but that would be insane. That would be crazy. 
Make sure your oven's preheating to 375 and then bake these for 30 to 40 minutes. Need to be bubbling in the center and golden brown in color. I've been waiting patiently. Let's see if they're ready. They're bubbling. These are golden brown and all my waiting has paid off. They smell fantastic. The smell is wafting. You know I like a waft. Make these, make the chicken pot pie pasta, make the chicken and dumplings, and tell me what you think.